Hello, everyone. I'm Jordan Hansen here with Dennis. And Dennis, your last name, help me pronounce it. I should ask this Dr before. Drellishak. Drellishak. Dennis Drellishak. Dennis and I, we've met and spoken before. And it was just so interesting as I was conversing with him then, I was like, I had just have to get him recorded because uh, a lot of what we do at Cobalt Intelligence is try to help companies do their underwriting. And while Dennis isn't just underwriting, he is focused on due diligence and background checks, but not for individuals, which I think is the cool part. He does it specifically for companies. And so Dennis, I just wanted to take a second and learn a little bit more about what CS Business Screen does. Yeah. So CS Business Screen is a due diligence um, investigation firm. So we're a group of private investigators that help companies mitigate risk, basically in any relationship they sort of get into. Um, so a lot of our clients are, you know, investing in companies or they're hiring a new vendor um, or they're, it's, it's an association and a company is joining that association. So we're basically there to point out any potential red flags before you, you know, put a lot of time into uh, this comp, like working with the company. Yeah. Um, and so we use a, we use a variety of like public records, databases, um, just a variety of different things to produce a, a report that easily identifies red flags that you may, you know, come across if you, if you work with this company. Now I work with, like I said, I work with a lot of banks, financial institutions, not many are going into the depth that you are doing. And why do you think the extra steps of what, what would require someone to take those extra steps and hire someone like yourself versus just do their standard you know, check secretary of state, check maybe court judgments, you know, cursory slight public data checks. Uh, when do you think it requires someone like you versus them just doing a manual check? Yeah. So I would say about half of our clients come to us after they've been burned and it, yeah. you know, so they, they, they don't really think about like the extra steps until something bad happens and they find out, oh, you know, the, the owner of this thing has a, you know, a history of, bad companies or just bad decisions. And this is a newer company and, you know, we checked this company and there wasn't any issues with it, but the individual attached to it, you know, who's actually running the company has issues. So um, I think a, a lot of our clients use us when it just the, the size of the deal or the relationship and there's, you know, if anything goes wrong, it could affect their bottom line. So they're, they want to, go the extra step and make sure they're not missing anything. Um, and so, so when we're doing company checks, we're checking the actual company and any sort of public records or negative media or anything tied to that company. And then the actual individual too. Um, and that's where we find most of the issues is tied to individuals that are like officers or owners running the company. Um, so that's kind of where we go the extra step of, I, I come from a, a pre-employment background check um, background. And so for hiring, doing background checks, running uh, searches on individuals. So we took that idea and kind of did uh, combined it with searching the actual company. Um, and, you know, that's kind of what we offer. Yeah. Now, can you tell, I mean, when we had our previous conversation, you went through some of the steps you were doing, and I was just amazed at, at the amount of, you know, diligence, anything that's yeah. not like a confidential process. I would love to hear what, like, let's say I come and make an order from you today and I say, Hey, this business, and I don't know what field do you require from me? Like, but let's say I, I engage with you. What would your typical process look like? Yeah. So, I mean, we would just require a little bit of information on, on the actual business. So just legal company name and address. Um, and from there, our first step is basically just identify the business and make sure that the information you supplied us was correct. So that's kind of where we use Secretary of State, figure out where what state they're registered in. Um, and that's where we can kind of figure out the game plan of, okay, they're, you know, they're registered in the state of Ohio. Um, we're going to check the courts in Ohio. So yeah, first we identify the business. Second step is we basically, the roadmap of what we're going to search. So based on what the client is interested in, you know, financial information, uh, litigation, criminal information on like owners or officers, um, we then put the roadmap of where we're going to search. Um, so sometimes that means we physically can go to the website, court website, search records. Sometimes that means we have to send someone into court. A lot of courts aren't online. Um, and we we also search, we have, we have a, 
access to a variety of databases that can kind of that have you know criminal records civil records so we can do like a, a very broad search of the entire country and then we also hone in on specifically where these companies or individuals have lived so with individuals we're able to do a ssn trace it's called where we can see you know names they used in the past uh counties they may have lived in and from there we can you know target where our searches are going to be so I'm just gonna what's an, an SSN trace? Is that similar? I mean, when I check my credit, they oftentimes have my address history. Like how is my different aliases or names or whatever, how are they how are they associated with my social security number? Maybe I applied for a credit card under a Yeah. Different... Really? I mean, people are just selling your data like all the time. <laughs> so yeah. apply to a credit card, you paid a utility bill, you signed up for a magazine. Um, it's just a big collection of data. And they try to associate it to a single person. So we don't actually need someone so to, to run it. We can run it just by name. It's just, you know, if you run Mike Smith, you're getting a ton of those. So right. we, we ask for like just some simple identifiable information so we can target that person and go, okay, this is who we're, this is who we're looking for. Here's the po possible places they've lived. Um, there's a lot of wrong data in there. And that's, that's like, one of the key differences between us and some of our competitors is we all the raw data we verify at the source. So, you know, we might do an SSN trace. It might say, hey, you had a parking ticket that's, or you had a warrant out for your arrest somewhere. And we actually go and search that and go to the court, verify it. Oh, it's actually for someone else. So we're, we're taking the extra step of all the data that we find in like these databases, we actually go to the source and verify it in real time. Um, make sure it's the person that we're investigating and that's the records actually tied to them. And that's how, where, wait, how do you do that? You mentioned this before. So how do you verify? I mean, there's a lot of different counties. How are you, I mean, how are you able to verify all those at the source? So we, you know, either we go to the, the county website and, you know, we can. Yeah. Access, so maybe it's online. Uh -huh. Yeah. Online. Um, we send in a court runner. So some counties, you actually physically have to send someone in and pull records. Um, or we, we use um, vendors that can help us kind of, especially in uh, different countries that can help us search this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we're not too, too familiar with the country. U.S. we're, we're pretty locked in on. But um, yeah, so we're, we're always sending someone into the source. And a lot of people, so we're not, every investigation we get, we're not searching every county, you know, it's just depends on the risk. Some people want us to, you know, do a full background on someone. Some go, okay, just the last 10 years, you I know, see. where have they lived? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of people just want to do current, current county that they live in, current name, current county. And that's like um, probably a different pricing point based on how, yes. depth, how much depth they want there. Yep, exactly. And so, then how do you differentiate? How do you know, like you said, oh, that's not even the same person. What would tell you, okay, that's, that Mike Smith is not the same Mike Smith. Yeah. So uh, we use like, we, so our investigators actually go through the court records and, and go, okay, I found an address that matches. A lot of court records have date of birth, so we can match the date of birth mm -hmm. um, with someone. So we're always find, finding at least one, two identifiers, either name, um, and something else and and if we if we have a good hunch that's the person we'll still kind of report it but just let you know that like this is we couldn't fully identify this but um you know some court as you probably know courts and like government records are just there's no standard so yeah it's a mess uh -huh. yeah so some some states some counties really easy good identifiers other ones no identifiers so it's it's just you know it's kind of how you, you have to feel out the whole investigation and the goal is to provide good information to the client so they can make a confident decision. So and so that report at the end, I mean, is it like a thumbs up, thumbs down? I mean, what does it look like when it comes back to the the customer? Yeah, so it 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 kind of is. We we have two basically complete statuses. It's complete and then complete with alerts, uh, um, and so. Yeah. So an alert is basically, we found something that you should look at. Um, and so our reports kind of just do a high level of basically everything we search. If there's an alert, we do a more write up of like, here's the record we found and in the actual county or state. 
um, and it's just some high level information on it. So we don't make the decision for the client. We just kind of point everything out and they make the, the, the decision to move forward with the uh, company or not. Yeah. Hmm. Now with the increase of, you know, AI, new technology, where do you see the industry changing? I mean, I don't, this individual background check is like a, everyone knows that that exists. I hadn't really heard of very many people doing company background checks, not like as a service like you're doing. So yeah. do you feel like this industry is growing or what, to, how will technology adjust it? What do you think? Yeah, I think it is. Um, you know, there's really two ends of the spectrum right now where there's this instant access sort of database stuff like a LexisNexis where it's just a bunch of information that they collect and, you know, they're doing web scraping and pulling it all in and you can search and do everything yourself. Um, and then the other end of the spectrum is you hire your law firm or a private, a, a traditional private investigator to do like a really in-depth report. We're kind of in the middle of like, you know, we, we have a quick turnaround time, two business days compared to an investigator, which is sometimes month, like a month. Well, yeah, two um, business days is crazy. That's really fast. Yeah, so that's our average turnaround time. Um, so I think the more and more people work with other businesses, which I think is on the rise where companies are contracting more, using vendors more, because um, you, know, you have more flexibility that way where you're not tied to an employee. And if there's issues, you can kind of just let them go without any liability. Mm -hmm. um, which is good and bad. Um, but yeah, I think as more and more relationships grow between businesses, um, people will want to just check them out and just make sure that there's no issues, um, especially if you had issues in the past. It's very easy to start a company now. And you know, I think it's not to have a LLC or corporation doesn't mean what it did 20 years ago where you're, you're an established business. So I think people would want to know at least some some simple stuff about a company before they they work with them. And I the nice thing about AI, which we're looking into, is the data itself, just interpreting it and trying to standardize it. And I think that's where I see the future of AI is all this data from all these different courts, all di in different formats. I think it will just streamline the process of okay, we can input this raw data. It can spit out a standardized sort of thing without a ton of programming, you know? So I, I think that's where it's going to go. It's going to get easier and easier to search things. Um, and just compiling it all will just get faster with AI. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel as well as that AI can really just help make interpretation a lot quicker, you know? Otherwise you have yeah. to try to map certain field. Anyway, yeah, I think it's really powerful. I did, we do have chat gpt pro and i did ask it do a background check in cleveland ohio which is where i'm at totally failed so i'm i'm safe there so no. far so far it yeah. can't get to yet <laughs> it gave me like a link to a website that doesn't even exist it, it, it got it got probably about 90 percent there okay just kind of, the with background checks and investigations you you have to be 100 percent or as close to 100 percent as possible because these are people's businesses, people's lives. So any screw up or anything reported wrong, you know, a person's going to know and, and fight that. So AI is, as I like to say, confidently incorrect mm -hmm. sometimes. And you don't know where it's incorrect. So right. it's something that we can't really trust yet. It's a tool, not. but not the only yeah. tool. It can't be the only tool. Yeah, exactly. Right. So. Yeah. Well, this is awesome, Dennis. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else I missed? Anything else you think is important that should be shared? Um, I think just in general about investigations and um, kind of performing due diligence, there's a lot of stuff that I think a lot of people just don't even do that they could easily do themselves. And just like we come across cases where someone's about to partner with someone and the company is, doesn't even exist or uh, it's dissolved years ago. So simple things like, you know, going to the secretary of state website or using a service like yours that sure. could just pull the information. Like that is the most basic check I think you could do is just, is this, is this company legit? Um, so I think just always performing a little bit of due diligence um, on companies is, is a good idea. And, you know, it's becoming more and more 
there's more compliance things where you have to perform some sort of due diligence, depending on the industry you're in, um, to have a customer or a client. Um, so I, I, as that becomes more and more standardized through the government, I think it's a good practice to at least start some sort of program now to like just have some sort of due diligence before you work or partner with someone. Just some basic checks that are really easy yeah. to do, very inexpensive. Like all that data is public and free. And if you're not doing that many, it's pretty easy to do manually. Yeah. Like it, we get people that sometimes reach out to us and we have to turn them away because we're like, what you want, you know, it, you have such a low risk that it doesn't make sense to use a service like us. So, right. and we try to point them in the direction of here's how you could do it yourself, that sort of thing. Yeah. So. Hmm. I appreciate your time, Dennis. This has been really interesting to me. I think it's uh, fascinating. So anyway, I appreciate yeah, your time. Thank so you much. so much.